The B24 from Inwood is an ARGB 240 millimeter AIO with an MSRP of 135 US dollars. But is it any good? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I review and test PC cases, CPU coolers, and PC case fans. And before I actually get into the review, just to have full disclosure, Inwin did send me over this cooler so I could review it. But as always, all the opinions expressed in this video are mine. So if you do end up liking this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel because it really does help out a lot. Okay, I'll be starting off with a quick overview or rundown of the BR lineup from Inwin. There are only two AIOs in the BR lineup. Both of these AIOs are only sold in black. There is the BR24, which is the 240 millimeter AIO, and the BR36, which is the 360 millimeter AIO. So pretty simple. Okay, let's see what comes in the BR24 box. There is the AIO and fans, of course, a business card with a QR code on it to the installation guide and or manual, a small tube of thermal compound, a large bag with all the mounting hardware in it. There is an ARGB hub, and a whole lot of cables. Taking a look at the AIO, the radiator is aluminum and it has an FPI of 18. The pump is not in or on the block, rather it's connected to the tubing. The pump is powered by a separate three pin fan header. Now the length of the tubing is pretty typical for a 240 millimeter AIO at 400 millimeters. Moving over to the block, the cold plate of the block is copper, while the top has ARGB LEDs on it, as well as a fan. This fan is meant to help cool the motherboard's BRMs. This fan has a max rated RPM of 2500 and a minimum rated RPM of 400. The bearing type is a LLSB. That's a long lifespan sleeved bearing. Moving on to the fans, they are both AL120 fans. These fans are ARGB. They also have a four pin PWM connector. There are nine blades. They have rubber pads on each corner, a max rated RPM of 1800, a minimum rated RPM of 400, and the bearings are again LLSBs. Okay, the dimensions of the radiator with the fans attached is 180 millimeters long by 120 millimeters wide by 54 millimeters deep. Moving on to socket compatibility, the BR24 is compatible with most Intel mainstream sockets and Intel's HPC lineup. Now my contact at Inwin has told me that new boxes going out do have the LGA 1700 kit included in it, but if you're buying old stock, it may not actually have it in it, and it's not updated on the website or on the box, so be careful with that. For AMD compatibility, it's compatible with AM4, which means it will be compatible with AM5, and it's also compatible with Threadripper. Okay then, moving on to how to install the CPU cooler. I'll be installing the CPU cooler on an AM4 motherboard. The installation between Intel and AMD sockets are not the same, so if you are planning to install this cooler onto an Intel socket, please check the installation guide. Now as always, before you start, make sure you have a flat, clean, and sturdy surface. You should also have some kind of mat, preferably an anti-static mat. You will also need a PH2 screwdriver. We'll start by installing the fans and radiator onto the case. I recommend installing the radiator along the top of the case with the fans on top of the radiator orientated as exhaust. If you want to install the radiator at the front of your case, please just make sure to install it with the tubes on the bottom. And this is because of where the pump is located and you don't want the pump at the top of the loop. And if you have the tubes facing up, the pump will be at the top of the loop. Now to install the block, you will need your motherboard mounted inside your case and the AM4 bracket that came with your motherboard. Align the standoffs on the backplate to the holes on the motherboard, then find the AMD mounting standoffs and screw the mounting standoffs into the backplate. With the standoffs in, find the AMD mounting brackets. You need to slide the mounting brackets onto the block. Once the mounting brackets are installed, we'll need to connect the main cable to the block. This weird connector is what gets plugged into the block and it will give power to the LEDs and fans once everything is plugged in. 
With the main cable connected to the block, it's time to clean off the CPU with some isopropyl alcohol. Then apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU's IHS. So with the mounting brackets installed, the main cable plugged in, plus making sure to remove the sticker from the bottom of the cold plate, place the block cold plate down onto the CPU's IHS, making sure to align the screw threads on the standoffs to the holes on the mounting brackets. Then screw in the four thumb screws into the standoffs. You will need to use your PH2 screwdriver to make sure that all the thumb screws are tight. Once that's done, we'll need to plug in all the other cables, starting off with the pump. This connector should be plugged into a pump header on your motherboard. If your motherboard has a pump header, if your motherboard doesn't have a pump header, then you can just use any fan header. Then plug the SATA power connector from the main cable to a SATA power connector on the power supply. Then take the PWM connector from the main cable and plug that into the CPU fan header on your motherboard. Repeat this process with the 5 volt ARGB female connector on the main cable. If your motherboard doesn't have a 5 volt ARGB header, you will need to use the ARGB hub. Once you have the PWM connector and the 5 volt ARGB connector plugged into the motherboard, we'll need to plug in the fans on the radiator into the fan splitter on the main cable. Then take the ARGB connector cable and plug in the ARGB connectors on the AL120 fans. And finally, plug in the lead of the ARGB connector cable into the extender connector on the main cable. And that's how you install the BR24. Okay, I'll quickly go over both the PWM range and the ARGB LEDs. Starting off with the AL120s, attached to the radiator at 100% PWM. The motherboard is showing the RPM of these fans is 2160-ish. So much, much higher than the rated 1800. Dropping the PWM down to zero, the motherboard is showing the RPM at 650-ish, which is still much higher than the minimum rated RPM of 400. For the VRM fan at 100% PWM, the motherboard is showing the RPM of this fan at 2700-ish. So again, higher than the rated 2500 RPM. Now dropping the PWM down to zero, the motherboard is showing the RPM at 1360-ish. So yet again, much higher than the minimum rated RPM of 400. Now for the ARGB LEDs, I do like the way the block looks. The LEDs behind the fan and everything do look really nice, at least they do to me. And again, the fans look good too. The LEDs are bright and the colors do look good again to me. But again, this is a very subjective thing. Okay, on to the temperature testing. If you haven't watched my CPU cooler testing methodology video, I strongly suggest you do. It's where I go over the how and what of my CPU cooler testing. I'll have a card above and I'll also have it linked down in the description. The BR24 in the 35 dBA noise equalized 87 watt test did not perform very well with an average CPU temperature of 77.3 C. This lands it between the Hyper 212 and the Windwalker, which is pretty far down the list. Then in the full speed test, the average CPU temperature went down to 71.6C. This has it between the Peerless Assassin 120 and the NH-D15S, which is quite a difference, but that 5.7 Celsius difference comes at a 16 dBA jump. And 16 dBA is a lot. That's much, much louder. Now in the 150 watt testing, we see much the same. The noise equalized test had the average CPU temperature at 84.9 C and the full speed test had the average CPU temperature at 75.8 C. So at full speed, this cooler does perform as expected temperature wise anyways, but it is very loud while doing so. So what do I think of the BR24 from Inwin? Now I am a bit torn here because I do like the idea of the AIO and I do like the way it looks, but I do have a few issues with this cooler. Primarily the noise, the AL120 fans are loud and I mean really, really loud. The BR24 is more than 10 dBA louder than the Celsius S24 while having the same average CPU temperature in my 150 watt testing and 10 dBA is a lot. 
And you can clearly see how much this AIO struggles in the 35 dBA testing. The second issue I have is with the VRM fan. Now I really do like the way it looks, but who is it for? Because the VRM fan works. The BR24 did have the lowest VRM temperatures of the coolers that I went back and checked on in my 150 watt testing. But I'm using a good motherboard, so as you can see, all the VRM temperatures of all the coolers I've tested are pretty good. Which brings me to the point of, who is this actually for? Where I see this best being used is with a lower end motherboard with smaller VRM heatsinks. But if you have a lower end motherboard with smaller VRM heatsinks, you shouldn't be spending 135 USD on an AIO. Just go buy an Assassin King 120 for 40 USD and put that 90 USD towards a better motherboard. Now on the other hand, if your budget does allow for $135 CPU cooler and you want to keep your VRM temperatures as low as possible, I still can't recommend the BR24 because the AL120 fans are just so damn loud. Now to be fair, there might be a better sweet spot between running the fans at full speed and running the fans at 35 dBA that show this CPU cooler in a better light, but I don't have that much time to just test this thing like 50 times. Sorry. Well, that's all I got for this one. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There's also the HFG Discord server. I put up all the charts of my CPU coolers, my cases, my fans up on there. So that's a great place to get all the most current information. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.